Dogs of Tank Dungeons and Friends, Episode 9, Stephanie's Old New Home. Stephanie was working on the island of Sodor, carrying a Sodor shipping company package, a sign, and butter. There had been a, a storm breakout that last night. Stephanie had to deliver some goods. Stephanie stopped for a rest. It was 8 o'clock. It was time for the, the express. Gordon had broken down, so Henry was going to pull the express today. He doubled up to the two express coaches and was about to set off when he didn't look. Stephanie was coming. Stephanie blew his whistle. Peep, peep. Agra Henry. He stopped. But Stephanie kept on going. He smashed into Henry. Oh no, the Henry. Matthew, the Duke and Duchess's house. The Duke and Duchess were gone out for dinner, but Strapham Hat was watching the house in case any robbers wanted to come and rob the house. He was sitting in the back rocking chair. But then Henry came along. He busted the rocking chair into, into smithereens. Strapham Hat went flying. He fell to the ground with the, with the thump. Luckily, nobody was hurt. But Henry but the Duke and Duchess's house was ruined and Henry was dented. This was just like the day the flying kipper happened. And luckily, I was going to reverse. There were no passengers in it. Stephanie had also crashed. It was only him on his side. I am going to report this to Sir Topham Hat, said James. But Sir Topham Hat was walking away. He went behind the shed to think about what happened. He came up all around Soder to, just to get there because the line was blocked. Sir, said James. Yes, says an upper hat. Stephanie bumped into Henry and caused a terrible accident. So that's what happened to the rocking chair. That's what I'm about. Oh dear. I, I think, um, Sir James. I think we should ship him away to the mainland. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes he's just too. Sometimes he's just too crazy. When Stephanie was repaired, he chucked. He chucked sadly to the docks. He didn't want to be shipped to the mainland. Spencer could be there. Okay, time to hook you up, said Cranky. I don't know why you're going, but. Goodbye. Cranky had no idea that Stephanie had crashed Henry into a terrible accident. But he had heard the loud scream of the Duke and Duchess's yelling. Stephanie had stopped watching his house. Well, goodbye, said Cranky. Oh, great, it's Stephanie, said Bulstrode. And he... On their fourth day, it was morning, and Stephanie awoke. He found himself in a dock. It didn't look like the same dock at all. Stephanie was unloaded. This is strange, she said. And he puffed away. Then he stopped. I think I'll stay here at the docks until somebody gets here and brings me back home. Stephanie didn't like the main man at all. It was creepy. Stephanie was scared. Then he heard a familiar whistle. The engine flew across the track. Then he came back. It was Spencer. Pushing it back and past the dogs. He never noticed it. Until finally he backed up too far. The car flew off and it smashed. And Spencer stopped. He saw Stephanie. Stephanie, what are you doing here? Ah, it's Stephanie. Spencer! And he rushed away. Stephanie came back to the docks. Is Spencer here? He asked himself. Nobody. Not even Spencer. It was clear. I want to go home, he hollered. The whole island here heard it. They all rushed to the docks. 
jumped on the boat's pony just as he was leaving. Whoa, what are you doing here? Is it a boat's crowd? The crowd didn't look around. They just went away. Didn't need to back. They didn't want anyone to see. Especially Spencer. Boat's crowd turned around and went away. But one year later, Thomas was sad. He, he did not know what happened to Stephanie or, or, or why. He was sad everywhere. He was even having bad luck. The bridge wouldn't work. It only showed a little. Finally, it will get by. And it's very slow. And sometimes Thomas was late with his loads. Just because of the bridge. He, yes, he was having very bad luck. Then he saw Henry and seen it was still there. For one whole year it had stayed. Hmm, said Thomas. That's Stepney's load. I followed Stepney's tracks to their docks. Thomas rushed to the docks. Guys, have you seen <coughs> Stepney? He said, No, it's a cranky. I haven't seen Stepney. Oh no, said Thomas. This is bad. I have, said Bullshoot. Stepney crashed in Henry, and Henry crashed into the Duke and Duchess house. And the Duke and Duchess house crash into the rocking chair. What's that? The rocking chair is not just a that and that. And so that's what went fly. So Stephanie had to come here and he had to be sailed to the mainland. The mainland, cried Thomas. Take me there immediately. All right, said Mr. Strode. So Thomas started to, to sail away in the boat with Mr. Strode. As fast as he can. It only took two days. Not four. Thomas was unloaded. He saw Stepney. Stepney, said Thomas. Thomas said, Stepney, what are you doing here? I've come to see you, said Thomas. I'm your terror. Thank you, said Stepney. I'm very thoughtful. Let's go. So they both hopped onto the boat. Stepney and Thomas rushed to Stepney's favorite place, Radiant Springs, and when they looked, it was gone. All there was was Doug and Emily. Doug, Emily, said Thomas, what happened? There you are, Thomas, where have you been? To the mainland, said Thomas, to bring home this. Stepney, Stepney, they said, ah, and by the way, when you were gone, they took it out. And they rushed away so fast that they crashed. Ow, they said. Stepney got back to work. On the end of the floor. Stepney was amazing. He tried to be as good as he could. He never got hollered at by any other engine or spicer top. Hatch! This is nice, said Stepney. I'm not failing. And he wasn't. He wasn't a failure engine anymore. He needed home. And this was his all natural home. But after a few days, Stepney noticed wherever he was, no one was there. When with Cody and Scuff were supposed to work at the dump that day, he had heard puffing and, and, and whistling. said Stephanie. They must have tripped away on me. Darn it. And he puffed away. I wish nobody could puff away from me. You tell him had had to call a meeting. It wasn't working out. Stephanie and Thomas were at that part station. They were inside. So tell him had had to catch 18 more 
megaphones to one gigantic megaphone. There was lots of there was lots of trains there. It could be heard halfway across the island. Trains on the suspension bridges. Trains on the high bridge. On the other high bridge. On the tracks. And even in the sheds. The top of my eye was mad. But he didn't talk mad. He talked, well, Thomas couldn't explain to everybody what the top of my could. Everybody, he said, why are you avoiding step me? Jeans peeped. Well, he said, because he bumped into Henry and broke him down. And the express had to be canceled that day. So I'm very mad at you. I'm going to miss you. But then he ran out of coal. Just a few inches he didn't step me. Bother. That's what happens when you have bad luck. Victor said, well, we don't know, he said. I don't know why, because nobody likes him anymore, and we don't like him either. Well, that's wrong, said the top of my step, When Thomas saved Stepney, wait, said Henry, Thomas saved Stepney? Yes, he told me all about it. He said that he was going to go to the mainland I saw his mouth opening with my very own eyes. He said that he had saved Stepney from the May. Wait, said Henry. He saved Thomas. Yes, at the top of my head, he told me. He went to go to the mainland and get Stepney to bring him back here. One step when he came back, he never failed. He was very nice and he never failed. Again, he never failed. You hear me, James? Yes, said James. That goes for everybody, said the top of my hat, hollering into the megaphones. Ah, everyone said, that's too loud. Who cares, said the top of my hat. Somebody's very sad. And Thomas is angry with everybody on the island, except Stephanie and me. Even... He didn't clear though. Stepney was proud. So was Thomas. Thomas had saved, had saved Stepney's life. Stepney had a better life. Now all the engines were going to stay high and toot their whistles whenever they came. Stepney also came third place in, in the honor guest of the month. I think he came third place in the award-winning plaque for the, the most useful engine, and he had never failed ever again. The end.